Coral reefs are incredibly important habitats, not just from a biological perspective, a huge number of animals live on coral reefs, but also important from a human perspective. About 9% of the world's planet lie on coral reefs for, for food security, for income. But coral reefs are dying out. According to NOAA's National Ocean Service in the United States, 2015 will be a disastrous year for corals all over the world, and in particular in the Pacific and Western Atlantic Ocean. Scientists warn that the unusually warm ocean temperature may lead to the death of corals over a wide area and cut the long-term supply of fish and shellfish that rely on them for food and shelter. Climate change, pollution and other man-made environmental stresses cause corals to die through a process called bleaching. So inside the coral, uh, uh, um, an algae, a symbiotic algae lives inside the coral and it provides the coral with about 80% of its food. It's also the algae that gives the coral its color. And what happens with climate change is subtle temperature increases in the ocean break this relationship down between the coral and the algae. And so the algae ends up leaving the coral and the coral then ultimately le loses about 80% of its food source. Coral bleaching is happening very fast all over the world and little can be done in the short term. By the time humans stop polluting the sea and the atmosphere, corals might be extinct. At the Horniman Museum and Gardens in London, in the United Kingdom, researchers are studying coral reproduction as a way of fast-tracking conservation research. The only way coral reefs are going to survive in the future is if there's uh, reproductively fit populations of corals able to reseed and continuously regrow corals. But it's very difficult to study reproduction in captivity. They typically only spawn over a few nights of a year. And so what Project Coral is trying to do is to develop techniques to understand what makes a coral reproduce um, in the wild and then replicate all of those conditions in captivity. We're currently relying on going out a week before the known reproduction event out in the field, bringing corals back into the lab to run tests. Scientists also take tissue samples from the corals to study in detail the development of the eggs. Here we have a, a cross section of the coral with, um, with white eggs um, inside the coral and then this, this sample has been put into formalin. We send it off to the pathologist. They will then decalcify the, the tissue so the, they put it in an acid and that melts away the, um, the calcium carbonate skeleton. Then gets put in a, wet, a wax block and then very fine slices taken off the end. Those fine slices are put onto a microscope slide and stained. And so what you see here is the pink area is the eggs and purple area is the, is the sperm developing. Analyzing corals in the lab offers insights into how these threatened animals cope with the double burden of climate change and human activity. So the advantages of doing this type of work in lab conditions is we're not bound to um, the environmental conditions, the weather conditions that might present themselves on a, on, a, on a reef. So we can study corals 365 days a year and if we can develop these protocols then it opens up being able to study reproduction throughout the whole year rather than this one moment of the year.